in yet another Cavs W. Breakout point guard Darius Garland dropped 27 points and a ridiculous 18 assists. The four-year legend of Belmont University and Dylan Windler was a game-high plus 19 while knocking down two timely triples. And the latest Rookie of the Year favorite in Evan Mobley had a typical 20 points and two blocks. Having to manage without the services of three backcourt shot creators in Colin Sexton, Ricky Rubio, and now Rajon Rondo, here's a full breakdown of how the Cleveland Cavaliers are still dominating. Before continuing, only 11.5% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. I left a link in the description for both those platforms. The Cavs' revolutionary tall ball lineup of Laurie Markkinen starting at the small forward, Jarrett Allen at the four, and Evan Mobley running the five has led to a monumental turnaround year for Hoops fans in Cleveland. Currently, the Cavaliers are eight games over 500, sitting sixth in the Eastern Conference and two and a half games within striking distance of the number one seeded Bulls. In the four Cavs videos I've posted in 2021-22, we've gone in depth on Cleveland's top talents like the ROI favorite in Mobley and the soon to be first time all-star Darius Garland at point guard. And in this video, you will see a breakdown of how the Cavs' most important players in Mobley, Garland, along with the serviceable fro Jared Allen, the former champions in Kevin Love and Rajon Rondo have been performing as of late. But Cleveland's 26th overall pick from the 2019 draft in the Belmont alumni Dylan Windler, he's a player we haven't broken down yet, so we're going to start by breaking down D. Wind. He may only be averaging 4 points per game this month and 2.8 on the season, but Windler's 6'8 frame, quick lateral movement and activity defensively, along with an efficient 40.5% three-point clip on the other end, keep him on the floor. He does only receive 10 minutes per game, but he's ninth and plus minus among Cavs players in the rotation as a plus eight on the year in total. Further speaking to Dylan's efficiency, man's making 54.5% of his three-pointers in January, taking two and a half triples on average per night over six games so far this month. We have to also give credit to the man in charge, Coach JB Bickerstaff, who was put in a tough spot, taking over for John Bayline and trying to right the ship from a bottom-feeding Cavaliers squad. JB's made a ton of innovative decisions, like starting three seven-footers, and so far, it's working. The last time this channel covered the Cavs, we broke down GM Kobe Altman's recent trade for Rajon Rondo, and unfortunately, Rajon sustained a hamstring injury, which has only allowed him to play three games in the Golden Wine, which is, of course, an extremely small sample size. Having said that, Rondo did average 10 points, 5 assists, and made an impressive 43% of his 5 three-point attempts per game over that short stretch. When the all-time point guard recovers from this minor setback, he should continue to be the perfect substitute for Ricky Rubio. But somehow, as of this recording, the Cavs have won 5 of their last 6 games, minus Rondo for the last 3 of them, and of course, Rubio and Sexton have also been out. So how have they done it? To be fair, they have took down some well under 500 opponents in the Blazers, Kings, Spurs, and Thunder, but one game did come against the Rudy Gobertless number four seeded Utah Jazz, who were fully healthy other than being without their three-time DPOI. But like this well-coached and managed in the backcourt team has done all year with JB Bickerstaff and Darius Garland at the head of the snake, Cleveland has taken care of what's in front of them in beastly fashion. You can attribute the Cavs' recent string of dominance to Darius Garland, combined with the consistent veteran-type value on both ends from only a first-year player in Evan Mobley. Since at this point, it's seeming like my recent top 10 rookie ranking where I had him second behind my beloved Scott Barnes is seeming like a terrible take that's aging poorly, we're going to lead off with Evan Mobley. In the wind down in Oklahoma City, the mesmerizing 20-year-old extended his double-digit scoring streak to 11 and had 16 in the first half alone. The former Pac-12 Player of the Year, Freshman of the Year, and Defensive Player of the Year last season with the USC Trojans has displayed that his elite length, speed, and long strides have more than translated to the pro game. Not only does Mobley have the requisite physical abilities with an overpowering 7'4 wingspan, but separating him from your typical big man is how polished his in-between game is, along with how powerful his attacks in and around the bucket are, whether he's slashing with force or working in the post with finesse. It's not merely Evan's ability to shoot over the top of anyone, but it's the balance and fluid motion in his mid-range and close shot mechanics that make Mobley a well-rounded offensive threat. While the man I had at number one in my rookie top 10 in Scotty Barnes is currently sidelined with a knee injury, 
Evan Mobley has had an utterly dominant month of January, proving me dead wrong for putting him second. Mobley's posting 17 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, and 1.3 blocks on 55% shooting from the field. Mobley's ability to not simply just receive passes from the low post, but off pin downs and attack the rim off the dribble from the perimeter, makes him a unique, potentially revolutionary type talent. Rarely do you see players in general, let alone a damn rookie, perform with the type of poise and consistency that Mobley's shown off in 36 outings for Cleveland so far. Evan's timing on both ends of the floor is on point, defensively in terms of his shot blocking slash general rotations, and offensively in terms of his awareness reading double teams and ability to find his teammates with bullet passes. The third overall pick from last year's draft possesses the IQ of a player with 10 times the amount of experience that he has, but continues to prove that his mentality and on-court awareness are well beyond his years. Moving on to Cleveland's explosive talent in the backcourt, the franchise's fifth overall pick back in 2019, Darius Garland, in the Cavs' impressive 20-point win over the Donovan Mitchell-led Utah Jazz, the third-year breakout point guard tallied his first-ever NBA triple-double. He only made one of his eight three-point attempts and shot three for 11 from the fields, but the 6'1", 190-pound Darius still hauled down 10 rebounds, posted 11 points, and dished out 14 dimes. After learning crucial lessons and going through two NBA seasons of ups and downs, both Garland's scoring and facilitating have reached new heights, allowing him to take over games at will in 2021-22. Garland's always been speedy, but his ability to utilize that quickness by instinctively changing speeds and direction makes the third-year PG look like a different type of player than who he was in his first and second campaigns. This season has seen Darius average 20 points, 8 assists, and 1.3 steals per game on shooting splits of 47, 37, and 92. As a rookie and a sophomore, defenses would intentionally speed up Garland's pace by pressuring him three quarters up the court, but as the soon-to-be 22-year-old product of Vanderbilt has put in the reps in working on his handle, footwork, and physicality, while simultaneously gaining valuable experience reading NBA defenses, now Darius Garland is capable of dictating the pace on any given night, crucially in the modern NBA. Not only has Garland's poise manufacturing shots for himself and his teammates improved, but his elusiveness in terms of how he's keeping the defense's incorrectly guessing pass or shot, that's been most impressive. For a player in the NBA to steadily make the leap into a top-notch star player, it's key that the unpredictability in his game is always present, and Garland's definitely doing an exceptional job of mixing up his attacks right now. Based off Mobley and Garland's play, Everyone forgets about the fact that the fro Jared Allen is more than earning his $100 million contract, contributing 16 points, 11 rebounds, and 1.4 blocks per game. Allen's also first among all Cavs players in player efficiency rating, and is third among centers, just ahead of his teammate Evan Mobley in defensive rating. Right behind Allen in team player efficiency rating, the 2016 NBA champ in K-Love is second on the team in PER. Kevin's receiving only 21.4 minutes each outing, but is efficiently revitalizing his career this season, swiftly coming off the pine to post 14 points, seven rebounds, and two assists per night. Love's also taking over six three-pointers on average every game and knocking down an elite 41% of them. At age 33, the 14-year veteran and former five-time All-Star has taken a step back in terms of the responsibility he takes on a roster but has quietly morphed into one of the NBA's better role players. After a six-game road trip, Cleveland now plays six of their next eight on their home floor. They've also got three key games against teams right next to them in the standings over that stretch, including outings versus the Brooklyn Nets, Chicago Bulls, and Milwaukee Bucks. We'll see if the Cavs can keep it rolling. Two shoutouts next video for my previous vid and this one, but who's the most lethal threat on the Cavs? Leave your take in the comments section down below to compete in the Community Speaks giveaway. This was D-Flow, I hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next video.